Margin as a concept of financial transaction is not new. It started in the late 1800s when it was called margin lending. Pacific Railway Act, passed on July 1, 1862, introduced the concept of margin lending to construct the transcontinental railroad across the United States. It became a part of the stock market in the 1920s. At that time, the economy was bad and margin rules were loose. You could invest $1,000 with your broker to receive a further $9,000 from them to invest a total of $10,000 in the stock market. Little by little, the rules became more restrictive, and today you receive roughly three times of buying power on the money you have in your margin account. That is, if you have $30,000 in your account, your broker will allow you to buy stocks worth $100,000 provided your margin requirement is 30%. That means $30,000 will bring you a buying power of $100,000. The rest of the money, $70,000, will come to you as a loan from your broker. It is an agreement you will sign when opening a margin account. Margin trading makes sense for both the broker and the trader. The broker receives an interest on the money you borrow from them, provided you did not liquidate your position within the same trading session. The interest rate depends on individual brokers. If you want to trade in your margin account, you must know your broker's interest rates. Margin is actually borrowed cash. However, brokers do not charge as much as your credit card company would. I have seen 7% to 14% interest rates with different brokers. One of the lowest rates is offered by interactive brokers. Their rates are 6.83% for borrowing $100,000. The rates go slightly down as you borrow more money. Thus, your margin rate will be 6.17% for borrowing $3.5 million. This chart compares various brokers based on their margin interest rates. If you borrow $25,000 from interactive brokers, your rate will be 6.83%. For the same amount, you may pay 13.7% to E-Trade, 13.08% to Fidelity, 13.08% to Schwab, and 13.25% to Vanguard Group. These rates are not constant. They may be higher, increasing your borrowing costs. If the central bank increases interest rates, that will impact your margin rates. If you are an options trader, your interest rates may differ from those for trading or holding stocks. You should also know your margin requirement rates before placing a trade. Margin requirements tell you how much money you must have in your trading account to cover the stocks you want to buy or hold on margin. Margin requirements may change within short notice based on the kind of stocks you want to trade. If a certain stock is unusually volatile because of unusual circumstances, your broker may not offer you three times your money to buy it. You may need to have 50% cash in your account, which means you could borrow from your broker the other 50% of the cost to trade that stock. In this case, your margin requirement is 50%. In some cases, your margin requirement for trading long may be 25%. That is, you could buy stocks worth $100,000 by having a minimum of $25,000 in your account. Your broker will lend you the other $75,000 to execute the trade. However, if you are a short seller, your margin requirement may be 30% instead of 25%. That means you must have $30,000 in your account to short $100,000 worth of stocks. You need 100% of the stock's value in your account to use margin within your individual retirement account or IRA. That is, there is no margin there. In addition, if the stock you want to trade is priced under $5 per share, you may need to fulfill 100% margin requirements to make a trade. The requirements will be set by your broker. If you trade leveraged ETFs, for example, 2X or 3X ETFs like SOXL, DPST or TQQQ, you will have higher margin requirements to cover your positions that is depositing more cash into your margin account before executing a trade. Your trading platform will tell you exactly what your margin requirements are for these ETFs before executing a trade order for you.
If you do not have enough cash in your account to fulfill the margin requirement, your trade will not be executed. In that case, you may take a smaller position to continue trading. There are two kinds of margin requirements. One is set by the broker. It is called the house requirement. The other is regulatory. It is called the Fed requirement or exchange requirement. Generally speaking, your broker's requirements may be higher than those set by the Federal Reserve Board, but that is only the initial requirement you must fulfill before placing a trade. Once you have taken a margin position, you have to fulfill something called the margin maintenance requirement. It can be compared to maintaining a property after buying it from its previous owners. You still have to cut the grass, remove snow and fallen leaves, and make sure that rainwater does not enter the basement. Your broker may say you have to have a certain amount of money in cash, not as stocks, in your margin account to tackle market volatility as part of your margin maintenance. But how does margin trading benefit you as a trader? Let us talk about the stock of a company called ABC. The stock is trading at $30 per share and you have just enough money to buy 1,000 shares. The stock rises 10% during the trading session. As a cash trader, your profit will be 10% of the $30,000 you invested. That is $3,000 including fees and commission. Not bad for a day's work. But if you trade in a margin account and your broker lends you money to buy another 2,000 shares of the same stock, you could make an extra $6,000 of profit. That is a profit that you did not invest your money for. Before the trading session closed, you exited the market and the money you borrowed from the broker went back to the broker. You are now $9,000 richer than yesterday, which would not have been possible if you traded only cash. Trading margin is leveraging your position for a better profit. Millions of traders across the world trade margins in stocks, options, cryptocurrencies, forex, commodities, and index futures every day to make a living. But I must warn you against margin. You should stay away from margin if you are not an experienced trader. First, you will receive a margin call from your broker if the value of the stocks you bought falls below your borrowed amount. If your margin requirement is 30% for a certain stock and you buy $100,000 worth of stock, and now the stock declines so much that the value of your total position is under $70,000, you will be asked to deposit money to your account immediately or liquidate your position partly or fully. Even if the share prices fall, it still means that the amount of money you borrowed from your broker, $70,000, remains the same. Your broker may choose to liquidate your position early without giving you an opportunity to deposit money into your account. It all depends on the situation. In case you do not have enough money to fulfill the margin call, the broker may liquidate your position and charge you a fee for doing that. Secondly, if the trade goes against you and the ABC stock falls by 10% instead of rising by 10%, you will lose $3,000 from your 1,000 shares and another $6,000 from your subsequent 2,000 shares. Your total loss will be $9,000. That is like losing about 30% of your $30,000 account. You will be left with $21,000 at the end of your trading session. If you traded cash instead of margin, your total loss would have been only $3,000 from 1,000 shares. You would still be left with $27,000. Third, the biggest danger remains with short selling in a margin account. If you buy a stock with a margin and the company goes bankrupt and the stock prices fall to zero, your maximum loss is 100% of your investment. If ABC stock comes to zero from $30, your loss cannot be more than $30, excluding the interest you must pay for trading margin. But if you short the stock and the stock rises from $30 to $60, to $100 or even $300 per share before you can buy it back, your loss may be unlimited. You will receive a margin call to liquidate your position immediately. You have seen how GameStop stock jumped from a few dollars to $400 within a few sessions during the short squeeze and what happened to the hedge funds that shorted the stock heavily. That is the risk of trading margin. 
You may not remove all the risks that come with margin trading, but you can minimize them and use margin as a tool to become a profitable trader. There is hope. That hope depends on how much you know about margin and how you manage your trades. I would recommend the following steps for you. Number one, do not trade margin. If your account is still small, expect a smaller return. Understand that your main job as a trader is not making big money overnight, but preserving your capital. If you learn how to do that, you will make money and one day trading margin will not be alien to you. Number two, do not borrow as much money as you can from your broker. Proceed with a conservative approach. If you are not satisfied with trading 1,000 shares of the ABC stock, buy only 1,500 shares instead of 3,000 shares. Every trade is a potential losing trade. The market can show every sign that you're going to win your trade and make a lot of money, but you may still lose the trade within seconds. Never trust the market until you have closed your positions. Number three, trade margin in a diversified portfolio. If your broker offers you $70,000, do not invest all of that money in one stock or one sector. Diversify your holdings so that if one sector fails, another sector can keep you afloat. Number four, use a hard stop loss or trailing stop loss. In most cases, they will protect you against market turbulence. Never trade without a stop loss. If you don't know where to set your stop loss, use the ATR or Average True Range Indicator and place your stop loss right under the ATR line. You can check out the ATR indicator by going to tradingview.com. Link in the description below. Number five, act quickly when the market is in your favor. Lock some profit. That will help minimize your losses if the trade ultimately hits your stop loss. I would say close up to 80% of your position. Let the rest run for higher profits. Number six, if the trade is in your favor and you don't want to close the trade, reset the stop loss at break even to cover your fees and commissions as frequently as you can following the ATR indicator. If you don't know how the ATR indicator works, subscribe to my channel for an upcoming video on it. I will show you how you can make this indicator a part of your trading plan every day. Number seven, do not hold trades overnight if the trade is not in your favor. Tomorrow can be a more difficult day for you. First, you must pay interest on the borrowed money. Secondly, the stock may gap down tomorrow, causing you further loss. There is no guarantee that a losing trade will become a winning trade in a week, month, or year. Some stocks or sectors need years to return to their previous price point. Some never do. Although Tesla is a great company, you can never tell how many years it may take to become a $400 stock again. Will you be able and willing to pay interest on $70,000 of borrowed money for two years or five years? Close your position before the session ends. That is the most reasonable thing to do. You may love the Tesla stock, but you are a trader. Your job is to protect your account. Move on by accepting your loss. It is hard to do that, but it is something you must do to become a profitable trader. Number eight, do not trade low price stocks. Do not trade highly volatile stocks. At the same time, do not trade before earnings calls, corporate announcements, or Fed meetings. All these can accelerate your margin calls. Number nine, Understand that sending money to your broker in response to a margin call may take time. Determine beforehand whether you will make a wire transfer, online transfer, or write an old-fashioned check to them. The longer the transfer takes, the more money you will pay in interest. Choose the lowest time-consuming method and check that it actually works so that you can use it when the margin call comes. If you have watched this far, give this video a thumbs up. Also, if you want to help me grow this channel, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. I will be back with many serious videos on money, trading, and investing. If anything regarding margin trading is still not clear to you, leave a comment below. I will get back to you as soon as possible. Goodbye.